strikes. Hello everybody, my name is Faithodas. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you the build I used to master at my first attempt the set dungeon of monks uh, Monkey King's Carb or more easily the Sanguko set. In this point let me mention that in the previous season 8 I managed to master this dungeon by using a different uh, build. I will provide the link to that video in the description so you can watch an alternative build if you want to watch it. Uh, so let's begin with the items. I used all the items of uh, the set because I didn't have the ring of Royal Grazior, so 6 slots are taken by this set's items. The helm. We need a socket to the helm just to put the highest diamond gem possible because we need a cooldown reduction. The best cooldown reduction we can get. The soldiers. We also want the stat for cooldown reduction in this item. The amulet. We want dexterity, critical hit chance, critical hit damage and a socket. Not really important, as you can see, I have the Bane of the Powerful Gem in this socket 
and it is not important for this set dungeon, it's practically useless. The chest armor, just uh, defensive type uh, stats and uh, three sockets for green gems. The gloves, a typical pair of gloves, nothing fancy, just critical chance and critical damage and main stat plus vitality points. And the patch, just uh, two sockets for two green gems. As you can see, my items are not that good, but for this dungeon we don't need better green items, those are more than enough. The most important item for this uh, set dungeon is the belt, the Kyoshiro's Soul Legendary Belt. This belt keeps sweeping weed active at all times and in this dungeon this skill must never deactivate. If it does, then we lose. My bracers are the spirit guards. The legendary power of this item is useless for this build, but I have this item equipped because it has good stats otherwise. My rings are Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, a very 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 good choice, maybe mandatory for this build's purpose, it helps very much with our cooldowns, so success is easier to come. And the Justice Ladern Ring. This ring is irrelevant to this build, but it has a socket, and I did put in this socket the legendary gem Mutilation Guard. This gem is very nice for this build, because it reduces the melee damage we take from enemies, and it's good because we pull towards our hero many enemies at the same time, so it keeps us safe from getting our ass kicked pretty hard. The boots are the crudest boots, we want this item just to have two mystical eyes instead of one. This item should also have movement speed bonus. The weapon I used is the Incense Torch of the Grand Temple, a monk's weapon which reduces the spirit cost of Wave of Light by up to 50% and I used the Ramaldani's gift to put a socket and a green gem for more damage output. We need our weapon to be as strong as possible. Now, in the three slots of Kanai's cube we put in the weapon slot, the power Kyoshiro's Blade, which increases the damage of Wave of Light very much by 150% and when the initial impact of Wave of Light hits three or fewer enemies, the damage is increased by 250%. This is very good for the big elites we are fighting inside this dungeon. In the armor slot we use Pido's Pride, which makes Wave of Light slow enemies and it deals 150% increased damage. In the jewelry slot I have a bullshit power, completely stupid and useless choice for this build, and dungeon. I haven't extracted other legendary jewelry powers in my cube, so I have this here just for the slot not to be empty. That's it for the items, as you can see my items are not good, except for 3-4, and uh, some of those items are irrelevant. But we don't need the best items for, for this dungeon, we need some good items combined with the right skills. So, the skills of this build are On the passive skills we have the Guardian's Path for more spirit regeneration Beacon of Guitar, we need the best cooldown reduction we can get, so this one helps very much Fleet Footed, we also need to run fast, so this one helps And Exalted Soul, for more spirit points and uh, regeneration. 
Spirit Regeneration. In the active skills we have Dashing Strike with the rune Way of the Falling Star. We use this for faster movement in the dungeon. We gain 20% faster movement for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike with this rune. Mystic Ally. In this dungeon I used the rune Fire Ally, which increases the damage I deal, but maybe it, it would be even better if I used the rune Air Ally for more spirit regeneration. But thankfully Air Ally wasn't needed at all. Let's not forget that with the crudest boots in our feet we get two mystic allies so double the benefits. Sweeping, uh, sweeping Wind and the Rune Inner Storm. We cannot play this dungeon without this skill and this rune gives more spirit regeneration which we need to have. Mandra of Conviction with the Rune Annihilation. We use this mandra for this specific rune because when we kill enemies affected by this mandra we gain 30% increased movement speed for 3 seconds. Wave of Light at the Rune Explosive Light. This is our main damage dealing skill for this build and we use this specific rune so we can deal damage from far away to our enemies and thus to keep the sweeping weed activated at all times. Because with the Sanguko set complete, our Wave of Light skill consumes a stack of sweeping weed to deal 3000% more damage and the belt of Kyoshiro Soul we have equipped gives us two stacks to the sweeping weed skill every second that this skill does not deal damage to enemies. So we have to keep our distances from enemies when we use the wave of light skill. And the last skill for this build is Cyclone Strike and the Rune Implosion. I think that uh, this skill is mandatory for this dungeon because it pulls enemies towards our hero so the sweeping weed skill deals its part to satisfy the rules of this dungeon. We use the Implosion rune because with this one we can pull enemies from a bigger uh, distance 34 yards instead of 24. Now for the Paragon points. As you can see, I mastered this dungeon at Paragon level 222. So I used my Paragon points like this. In the core tab I put points in the movement speed and maximum spirit. In the offense tab the cooldown reduction is very important so it gets maxed out and the rest of the points go to attack speed. In the defense tab resist all is maxed out and some points go to life. And in the utility tab resource cost reduction is maxed out to help us with not spending too much spirit and the rest of the points go to life per hit. So guys this is a build, a simple build really, all we need is a good or very good weapon, the best cooldown reduction we can get and fast movement speed. Thanks for watching, if you have any questions use the comments section and I will reply soon enough. Hit the like button and subscribe if you like this video, more videos are on the way. Stay healthy, I'll see you later. Bye. We will meet again.